Right, OK, first things first. Who am I? Well, I am Dr. Max Marley Aparfit. Um, do you like my shades? Yeah? OK. Well, let's try something quickly. I'm going to stick these up on Twitter later. Everyone over here. Hey, Cortana, take a picture. Is she ready? There we go. Perfect. Right. You guys. Hey, Cortana, take a picture. This side's better. She's being slow. Oh, well, fail. Anyway, carrying on with the presentation. Hi, my name's Dr. Max Marley Parfit. I'm from Fulcro Engineering Services, and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about making a business case for HoloLens and a bit of practical experience from development that I've had over the years, or, or last eight months, which has been kind of a wild ride. So today, you're going to find out how to get started with the HoloLens, how to really get yourself engaged. You'll learn how to justify a business case, so how do you actually talk to people to sell the device, sell your apps, but also how to make a case internally for purchasing. Um, you're going to understand, hopefully, how not to fall into the same traps we did, but also some of the wins. And then we'll also get you on with some experiences around the VR and HoloLens in construction. So, who am I? Well, as you can see from my wonderful minifig, uh, I'm Dr. Max from Marley Parfit. Uh, there is my Twitter username. If anyone wants to follow, please do. If you want to ask any questions, fire them at that as well. Uh, my background is robotics. Uh, I did space robotics as a PhD. Found out I was completely unemployable at the end of it, so started teaching virtual reality to undergraduates at the University of Reading. Um, from that, I moved over into VR and uh, really getting engaged with caves, which was fully immersive, room-scale virtual reality without having to wear a headset. Um, with that, I worked on some very large infrastructure projects. Uh, I've had work win the CIOB Innovation Research Award back in 2014. And then I came out into industry. I joined the Fulcro Group uh, to really bring this technology out into the construction sector and make it usable so uh, we could then visualize very well, very difficult circumstances out on construction sites. Uh, I've had my hands on the HoloLens since December 2016, and I actually had the opportunity, which was fantastic, to work with Microsoft out in Seattle on a proof of concept. So my background typically has been around this fully immersive virtual reality. Um, everything I do sits on top of the Unity platform. I've been Unity developer since 2013. It's a fantastic platform. I'm going to show you a quick product video here just to give you an idea of the sort of scale of models that we're now playing with. Step into your project and visualize reality with this fully immersive and collaborative environment. Engineer, optimize, and finalize better outcomes whilst interacting with your project BIM. Introducing the Fullmax Cube, the flagship product of the Fullmax innovative virtual and augmented reality solutions. This compact solution will fit into any office space and even site cabins, and comfortably allow teams of up to six people to simultaneously view and discuss the project in detail. Assembled in less than three hours and user training taking just 12 minutes, the Fullmax Cube can be up and running for a design review in less than half a day. Access BIM data live while in the virtual environment, enabling teams to interact with graphical and non-graphical information to make better decisions resulting in better design and operational outcomes. Powered by the Fullmax Keystone software, your project teams can easily take their virtual design and construction data from authorship to virtual reality in minutes. Project security is maintained as model processing happens within your organization by your project teams. To find out more, visit fullmax.co.uk. So everything you saw there was built on top of Unity. Um, the Fullmax Keystone software plugs into Unity directly. So if you've already, well, you're all here, so you all know Unity. We can give you our plugin. You can go away and put any model through into our device there. We also support Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and now HoloLens as well. So moving on. How to get started with HoloLens and Unity. And you'll see I've crossed it out and said mixed reality. Reason for this is over the last, uh, well, at Microsoft Build a few weeks ago, they announced these new mixed reality dev kits that are coming out. These are immersive virtual reality, similar to the Oculus and the HTC, where they block out the world, but they have the inside-out tracking. 
so the same as the HoloLens. And the great thing with these mixed reality dev kits, they're running on the same SDK, which means we can come along, and anything you develop for these, as long as you keep your geometry down to a level that the HoloLens can use, will run on the HoloLens. Anything you develop on HoloLens will already run on these. So that's a fantastic reason for using Unity and really driving things forward. So what is the HoloLens? Well, this video will hopefully let you know. The HoloLens is a device that extends the realities around you. The biggest problem an architect has is getting from the screen into physical space. A HoloLens is going to bridge that gap. It's just amazing. We're going from design to collaboration to radical collaboration. And it's completely changing the way people actually approach design. Microsoft HoloLens allows you to collaborate with somebody regardless of distance like they were there. Since we can't put our scientists yet physically on Mars, well, what's possible if we can make them virtually present? That's transformational. We've been teaching human anatomy the same way for 100 years, and it's completely two-dimensional, and the human body isn't. As soon as you can change somebody's understanding, then they can change the way they see the world. It's going to push us in ways that we weren't pushing ourselves before. Now we're actually able to bring it to life. This is going to be a big technology movement going forward. It's going to change everything. So that's the HoloLens. Really cool bit of kit, uh, lots of possible applications. But how do you actually get started with it? Well, the first thing to do, get yourself prepared. Unity 5.5 or later. So uh, they said yesterday in the keynote, 60% of you are already using 5.6, which means you're all ready to go for HoloLens. Make sure you install the Windows Store.NET backend for the scripting. And that will mean you have the SDK available. And then get the latest Visual Studio. HoloLens emulator path built into the Unity now. Um, but one of the big things here is the Holo Toolkit. These are a set of tools that have been written which really streamline development for the HoloLens. So if you wanted to get started, grab that set of tools, and it's as easy as dragging and dropping prefabs into your hierarchy, and it will just work straight away, rather than scripting it from the ground up. For more information, you've got the, uh, the link at the bottom there for the Unity partners with Microsoft. So um, where to go? Well, when you get to the Microsoft website, visit the Windows Mixed Reality portal. And within there, the first link on the left-hand side is for the Academy. Now, the Academy has a whole range of information on there. And start yourself with Holograms 100 or Holograms 101. These will teach you how to set up your scene, how to set up your camera, so you can start developing for mixed reality. But each progressive tutorial will step you through how to uh, set interactions, how to make sure that your scripts are talking to objects correctly, and how to do things like gestures, voice recognition, and control over your system. So, some practical tips for effective mixed reality development. So much like game design, you want to make sure that you get yourself familiar with your principles, set up your camera and scene, placing and sizing of objects, quite important. With the HoloLens, you've only got a 21 degree field of view. So you need to think cleverly around how you're going to position your model in space. You can have models bigger than that, which is fine, but uh, you will get the letterbox effect. And spatial mapping. So the picture at the top right there is actually of the spatial map that's coming out of the HoloLens. It's got two depth sensors on the front that's scanning the room and the environment around you 30 times a second. With the spatial mapping, that means you can then place objects or even drop a ball on a table, and it will land on the table and then roll off and fall onto the floor, which is really cool. And make sure you implement all interactions. When I first started, I started with just the air tap, which is as simple as that, very limited in how much you can actually do with that gesture. So things like speech recognition, using the clicker, tap and hold. So make sure you model in all your interactions. It will help you come uh, as you progress. Also, make sure you set up your environment. Um, when I first started, I had my nice shiny Mac screen in front of me. I had a laptop off to one side. And I had a small amount of area that I thought, that would be a good place to place holograms. Problem was, because the Mac screen was really, really shiny, the infrared tracking coming out of the uh, mixed reality was reflecting off all over the place. And I found models were disappearing behind the computer screen. And I was never able to find them or uh, get to them again. 
buy yourself an Xbox controller with the HoloLens emulator. You can drive it with keyboard and mouse, but you get some very odd combinations. So an Xbox controller really does make your life developing a lot simpler. And make sure you're not going to disturb others. I work in an open plan office, and when I'm sitting there and turning to my neighbor going, quit, quit, to try and exit an application with voice recognition, he'll start feeling a bit, well, why is he telling me to quit all the time? Also, think about uh, try not to go digging under desks to find uh, where your models have disappeared off to. Um, yeah. But also, it's best not to use it on an airplane. So that bottom image there, that was actually uh, on a flight back from Seattle. I was out with Microsoft. Um, I had an air marshal ask me what the hell I was doing and why I had this thing on my head, thinking I must have been a terrorist or something. So uh, just gave the whole lens to the air marshal. We realized what I was doing, and it was great. He even explained it to other passengers. But probably best not to use the whole lens on a plane. So. How about now you've got started, now you've got all the tools to get going and doing your development. How do you actually build and justify a case for the HoloLens? Well, first things first, as with any computer game, identify your problem and why do you need mixed reality? So mixed reality, much like augmented reality, allow you to overlay your models onto the real world. So for someone in construction like myself, I can go into a building like this and see where pipe work, which we're going to install, is located within one or two centimeters of where it's actually going to be. Or if you're coming into a, just a blank site, we can start putting the building where we're expecting to see it there. Uh, you've got your real-time environment interaction, so things like physics. So you can even, uh, as I just heard, you can now do nav meshes in the HoloLens. So you can get your automated characters to run around your living room and know where tables are to jump up onto, which is really cool. I'm going to try that when I get home. Um, benefits compared to VR. So you've got see-through lenses. So I can see through it. You can see my eyes through it. It helps for better com uh, communication. You also can see things, so you're not going to walk into them, which is great. Uh, we can share and network. It's a fully functional Windows 10 computer, so we can network and share the experience between devices. It's free from cables. And big thing here, no motion sickness, or at least very, very little. Because you can see through the device, you're not getting that persistence of vision issue that you get when you turn your head very quickly with, say, an Oculus or HTC Vive. So you don't get the motion sickness. And that's why it's got so many exclamation marks. Make sure you select your potential customers as well. So the current HoloLens is about $3,000. Um, that is out of the price range of a couple of people. Um, the mixed reality headsets, they're coming in lower price, which is fantastic. But they don't have the see-through visor. So you need to target your, your audience correctly. But think about the, let's take the HTC. It's about $700 at the moment. And you're needing a $2,000 computer to run it. That's starting to give you an idea. $3,000 isn't that expensive. Also, think about those who you actually want to work with. So um, there are the guys out there that want to use the latest tech. Normally, they're quite quick projects, quite fun. However, they can be very demanding and hard to satisfy the client. The ones I want to work with and the ones I actively look for are those who actually have their lives enhanced by mixed reality. Because these are the people that have an application. They've got a problem in real life that mixed reality can solve. And they're the ones that you're going to want to work and uh, transform the way they work. So I'm going to show you a quick video here about a company that installs stair lifts and maintains lift machinery. Tucson Group builds stair lifts, but staircases are all unique. And that makes it very hard to find one stair lift which fits all. Each and every stairlift needs to be customized to make a perfect fit. A chairlift allows our customers to access all floors of their home and be mobile in their own environment. Selling, manufacturing, and then installation, it all takes quite a while. People need a quick solution. With HoloLens, we started saying, let's look how we can measure stairs differently so it's quicker. Microsoft HoloLens is a fully self-contained, wearable holographic computer. It enables you to interact with your digital content and projects high-definition 3D holograms into the world all around you. Once we got the hand on the HoloLens, it was an eye-opener for us. You just put the HoloLens on, and then you scan the staircase, and then start to measure every step. HoloLens guides you through the process. But that was just the very beginning. We realized that the HoloLens is not just another methodology of measuring a staircase, but is actually performing digital data capturing to the clouds. 
with the Azure Cloud, we are actually able to transport all the data gathered by the HoloLens to our customer database and our accounting systems in real time and forward it to the manufacturing site where you start production. That is a completely new use. Delivering a product with HoloLens, we could become up to four times faster. We can show the animation like, hey, this is your personal stair lift. With the whole lens, we can provide that solution faster and it will actually make the customer's life better. We're getting more and more connected with each other, right? And the whole lens will play a major role in this connectivity. There's plenty of potential and whomever we discuss this with comes up with a new idea and that's what's so great about it. With this partnership with Microsoft, ThyssenKrupp will transform homes to make life better. That is a game changer. So there we go. The key term there, it's a game changer. This is how they're changing their work out, so out on site, but also how they're then communicating to the customer. So that's just one application. You can think of many different ways the mixed reality with embedded scanning technology can start interacting with the environment and building things. So it's not just games, although you could have lemmings running down the stairs. Uh, you can also do some really practical things. So again, make sure you know your customer's needs, you understand them. Uh, so making sure who's going to be using technology, is someone going to be able to perform the air tap maneuver sufficiently or are you going to need to give them additional input devices? Will the app require updates? If so, how often? And how will you distribute the app? This runs Universal Windows 10 apps. So if you've already got a Universal Windows 10 app, it'll run on here, which is great. So if you've already got those, you know how to develop for it. But it also means that you can sideload or you can put up to a store so people can download freely. It's also important for the developer to understand the client. What are their aspirations and uh, what is the project scope? And this is really leading on to some of the things that I'll talk about later about where we've fallen down in the past. So last thing there, understand the delivery schedule. With any app release, there's always going to be overruns, so make sure you factor in the time to adopt a new technology. So most importantly, I'd say with any project, work with the client and communicate. Collaboration is key. If you are talking to the client, sharing with them your progress, your issues, they feel like they're one of the developers. They feel they're part of the team. They can really drive forward and uh, give you feedback. And getting feedback earlier on in the process makes your lives a whole lot simpler rather than having to go back and keep changing things. And make sure you agree a soft drop date. That is a date where you can say, right, here's a line in the sand. This is the functionality we've got so far. Are we going to make the deadline? If we're not, what can we change to make it? If we are, what can we tweak to make it even better? So uh, ensure you have dialogue with all content suppliers as well. The amount of times I receive models that I haven't generated myself, and they're either too complex, or they've got flip normals or bad textures, and you've just got to work with all of the suppliers and make sure your client's happy before proceeding. There's no point going five weeks down the development stream if they weren't happy from day one. But most importantly, have fun whilst you're developing. If you're not having fun, why do it? So where we fell down and how not to fall into some of our traps. I kid you not, I've had drawings that are worse than this arrive on my desk saying this is what we want to build. Poor quality artwork, very confusing user interface scribbles going, this is where I want it to work. The only way you're going to be able to work with your clients is to understand, and this is why I say earlier, make sure you prep, learn how the technology works, see what's actually possible, and then start coming up with ideas to push and break the boundaries. High polygon models. With the HoloLens, you've only actually got 2 gig of RAM on board with a 32-bit processor. So if you're running more than 400,000 polygons, your app's going to start slowing down. Doesn't mean that you can't throw bigger models at it. The biggest model I've ever had running in there was 10.1 million. It was vertex lit with one directional light. It was running at about 15 frames a second, which wasn't brilliant. But really think about how you're going to deploy your app and what sort of stuff you're using it for. And uh, as I mentioned, models were poor UV mapping and inverted normals. So these are common mistakes that really need to be picked up early on. Also, make sure you agree, agree with your client how the look and feel of the app is. It really is a pain to change graphics later on. I had a client come around and go, well, actually, our official logo we gave you, can you make the background transparent? Oh, 
It's horrific, going back in and having to change all the settings to... Anyway, we then had to change it back a week later because their marketing department didn't like the fact we changed it to transparent. Uh, another story. Um, make sure you have a user interaction plan. With HoloLens, you've got to understand how you're working with your UIs, even more so than when you're working on a computer with a dedicated input, say keyboard and mouse. With HoloLens, it can be quite hard using gaze tracking, so make sure your buttons are actually slightly larger than you would normally have on, say, an, an iPhone or on a PC. And on-screen menus, do they disappear when you close them? Do they stay persistent and need a user to close them? So make sure you agree all these things with your client. And the models and graphics, make sure you also agree who optimizes the high polygon models. Is it down to you to optimize, or is the artist who's modeling at the high resolution going to optimize for you? And then UVs, textures, and also who fixes modeling issues. Far too many times I get models landing on my desk, architectural models, which are just naff. And is it my responsibility to fix them? Well, no. You need to push it back to the person who originally created that data. So make sure these things are agreed, otherwise you'll get yourself into hot water. So I'm going to show you, as I'm from the construction sector, where we're using HoloLens in construction and some of our applications. So our first ever application was a house builder's configuration tool. So typically, when you're out um, looking for a new house or buying something from a housing developer, they might have 14 to 30 different house types. On a site, they might have anywhere from five to seven, well, even more types of house on that site. But typically, they have one or two show homes, which means clients can't see what all the homes are going to look like. So what we did with this, we used Vuforia and a book, uh, just a marker which was in a booklet or a brochure, so they could open up the brochure and that marker would track and then they get a representation of that house. So uh, let me play a video and just talk you through the video. So uh, what we've got here, you can see our doll's house scale model of the house just floating in mid-space. So this was linked to a tracking marker. Got a very simple user interface here, so the user can go in using their gaze and a clicker to remove the roof. They can have a look inside the house. And you see this is come straight out of Revit. So this is an architectural model. Uh, hasn't had any cleaning up done to it. It's still high polys. Um, so it could run a lot faster. But what they wanted, this was just a proof of concept. Because when you're doing mortgage applications and things, you're wanting to know, if I'm going to change options and buy a house off plan, I can change things within that house. So going from stock, we can then choose different carpet options, different interior furnishes options. And you can see a real-time price indicator there. So for the long pile Navy, that's a $75 update uh, to the cost for that room. And this allows our customers to really get to grips with what their building's going to look like before they get the building. So in this case, the mahogany cabinets actually, no, let's change it to red birch. That option price is $100. So we can then see $175, that real-time feedback. So the customer knows, just like online shopping, how much have they got in their basket and how is that going to affect the outcome of what they're purchasing. We also wanted to give the, them an option to get inside the house. Rather than just being able to zoom in and zoom out, we now have the ability to scale directly to one-to-one. -to -one, so it's as if they're stood in the property. But this at least gives them the opportunity to move around within the building and explore different areas of it. So uh, you'll see they'll come down the stairs here. And we could just keep extending this. We only did the upstairs, uh, the bedroom, bathroom, and uh, hallway as options in this one. But you could go in and be able to do kitchen work counters, change your granite worktops. Uh, and see what those price implications are. So lots of potential applications, and that was the first app that we built for a client after working with Microsoft for a week. So um, a more recent app. Uh, this was, I was given this with two days notice and told just throw something together. As uh, I'm sure you've all had from managers in the past, yeah, it's fine, you've done something like this before, churn me another one out, just crank the handle. Um, so what we did, we added a bit more ability in this. So uh, we wanted to explore the model at life scale. Uh, we wanted to clients to see their best practices within the building. So included things like the mechanical, electrical, and power, the timber framing. And this is all complex engineering data. We haven't taken any of this through any uh, optimizations or anything beyond occlusion culling. Um, this one, we did do a light bake. It was my first play with a progressive light mapper. If you haven't tried it yet, seriously, go and play with it. It kicks in lightens, butt, in my opinion. But uh, that's because of the size of the models I'm working on. Um, so this model was about 800,000 polygons. And uh, hey, Cortana, 
That's me. Open Waits Apartment. Sure thing. Opening Waits Apartment. So, uh, again, Windows 10. So you've got a Cortana embedded on the device. So you can talk to her. You can get her to take photos. Uh, even record video directly from the device. But the great thing is, when you're taking photos and recording video, it's overlaying the 3D geometry on top of the real world. So what you see here, the model, I've just enabled spatial mapping, and that's what that grid is. This allows me to then pin that model to the real world. So in this case, we've got our doll's house example that we've just put on the table. So we can kind of look in through the end. It doesn't really show you much, but then what we can start doing, when I bring up the user interface, it just floats, it's pinned, it's world space UI, that one, so it's pinned into the real world. So there we go, it can hide ceilings, and that's purely done using the clicker and my gaze. So you can see that orange donut is wherever I'm looking, so hiding the MEP, hiding the framing. And then there you can see into the model. Now, what we've then also done, as I mentioned, is scaling. So step this on a bit. The second row of buttons, we've got 1 to 20 scale. We've now switched the model to 1 to 10 scale, so that's the tenth of real size. So we can start, really, if we've got a very large project, getting it into a usable space. So I'm going to ping it up to 1 to 1 scale now. And what you'll see is this now comes up to a near VR experience. So this is much like when you're wearing the Oculus. You can then look around. You can see my bake settings weren't quite high enough and the ambient occlusion bleeding around the edges of objects there. But uh, it at least allowed me to move around and experience the model at one-to-one -one scale. So we'll hide the internal doors, for example, and then we can see through into the next area of the building. Now, I was filming this in my spare bedroom, which is also my office at home. And uh, it's not a very large, so excuse the airbed. Um, it wasn't a very large room. So to be able to navigate through the model, we scaled it to half size. And this means that I could actually walk through all of the rooms in my small bedroom. So for every two meters, sorry, every meter I walked in the real world, I moved two meters in the virtual world. So I could then look around the rest of the apartment. So that is really where we are with HoloLens. It's still very new tech. I've only had my hands on it for eight months. It's only been out in the, uh, well, it's only been out for just over a year now. So we're still finding new ways of using it. And what I really say is encourage you, if you're already using AR, whether that's Vuforia or AR Toolkit, get yourself onto the Microsoft, uh, onto the Mixed Reality Developers Portal and really start understanding how you can use it. And the last slide here, um, from construction, being able to physically col collaborate with two different people, move a doorway in real time and understand that. So your engineer and your guy on site could even be in different countries and still working together. So uh, if you've got any questions, I'll be hanging around this area afterwards. Please do come give me a shout. Uh, if you can't see me, I normally have a pink hat on for some reason. Um, send me a tweet, uh, Fulcro Group. You've got the Twitter the feed there as well. And also Microsoft HoloLens. Um, go and speak to Microsoft if you've got any questions about it as well. And uh, yeah, I've got a short amount of time. I don't know if I'll take any questions. Oh, we do have a microphone. Does anyone have any questions, just quickly? No? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much.